regulated militia being necessary for the security of the state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. 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 The Second Amendment of the United States Constitution guarantees you the right to keep and bear arms, and that shall not be infringed. That is not a right given to you by the Constitution. It is confirmed by the Constitution. The Founding Fathers thought that that was the most, second most important amendment to the entire Constitution. Without the Second Amendment, you cannot protect the others. Barry, we got a real special gripe today, don't we? We do. Uh, it is uh, nonsense gun laws or stupid gun laws that serve no purpose other than to infringe on your rights. That's correct. And, uh, you know, we've actually been thinking long and hard about this gun gripe. I would go out, I would dare to say, I'd go out on a limb enough to say this is probably the most important gun gripe we've had yet. Probably. It's a very important subject. Yes, very important. That's correct. So we've got a little list going. We are going to refer to our list. So what's the first one that we thought of? When you think of bullshit gun laws, what's the first thing you think of? Well, you think of the uh, SBRs and things like that, short barrel rifles and shotguns. For instance, if you take this rifle and you cut it down like this, you're going to jail. This gun is made this way. This is a handgun. This is a Rossi Ranch hand. This gun is sold as a handgun. The nonsense to the whole thing is, whatever a gun is made as, that's what it is. That's what it has to stay. You can't take this gun on your own and make it look like this without going to jail. You can serve 10 years in prison for doing that. Right, and likewise, you wouldn't be able to take this pistol right here and put a full length rifle stock on it right. without joining the uh, Orange Jumpsuit Club either. Right. Which is retarded. There's no reason There's why no you should not be able world. to do that. No reason in the world. Other than it's too much fun. That's correct. Fun factor. Absolutely. Another uh, real BS gun law or, or jurisdiction right. that comes uh, to mind when you think about BS gun laws is California. California has got to be the worst place to live if you're a gun owner. I mean, the scope of this video could not cover completely every little thing that they have going on in that state. But the 10 shot mag thing and like the whole bullet button thing, mm -hmm. that is complete and utter horse crap. I mean, there's no reason that a rifle can't have more than 10 rounds in it. There's no reason. There, there's just no, no point. I mean, no. And if you look back at the Clinton gun ban, they went from 94 to 2004. No gun could be sold in any state with it over a 10 shot magazine. But if you already had them, they were grandfathered. They didn't try to control them, they just kept you from buying That's right. a gun. With, and you, you have to go to the gun show and get a, a, a grandfathered magazine and pay three or four times what it should cost. Yeah, I mean, that's just really retarded how all that works out. I mean, it's just beyond me. It's, it's counter. I mean, there's no logic well, to it. Well, a lot of my friends that carried high cap 9mm, they said, well, if I can only have 10 rounds, I'm going to switch to a 45. So it kind of it kind of backfires and evens itself out. But the gun industry should have sued over that, and they probably would have won. But they didn't want to push it. Well, one so. of the things you have to remember, too, about the 10-round mag thing is one of the big advocates for that was Bill Ruger. Oh and yeah, Bill Ruger. He was, was on that bandwagon. Now, you know, Ruger's a great company, they're a good American company, but now um, with, you know, now that the younger generation of the Rugers are in now, they're a little more accepting of the higher cap mags, but, you know, there was a time where Bill Ruger Sr., I mean, he was very big on the 10 round thing. I, I don't know why he was on that bandwagon, but he was. The first Mini 14 I bought in, not in the 70s, you could only get a five round magazine from Ruger. So everybody else made junk magazines for them. Yep. Now that William B. is dead, that you can buy brand new Ruger 30 round mags for your Mini 14. You never, never release those to the public though. So now that he's gone, they, they're opening up a little bit. Right. So, uh, well, uh, you know, we've been thinking about all these BS gun laws. Another one that really surprised me when I found out about it was Bloomberg's ban on Duracoat in New York. Yep. That has got to be the biggest crock of horse crap I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, granted, 
I've run into policemen before, and some of them may, may not be the most savvy people when it comes to knowing guns and stuff like that. That's fine, but to a degree, I think that to be a police officer, you ought to have at least some general knowledge of the different types of gun actions. I mean, a police officer ought to be able to pick up a rifle or shotgun or pistol and at least clear it and verify it safe. Make it and safe. part of that no, and part of that functioning is knowing if a gun is real or not. Right. And to, to make the citizens of New York suffer, it's already bad enough that it's hard enough for them to get handguns and licenses to carry handguns in New York, but then the fact that you can't have it colored some neat color just because the dumbass street cop right. it looks doesn't like know that it's a real gun or not, that, that's retarded. It is retarded. You know? but, uh, but all you would have to do to conceal a real gun from a police officer is you could take like a Beretta 92 and just paint the end of it orange. Oh. It looks like an aerosol. That's it. So uh, the color of thing is just ridiculous. Bloomberg is after your guns and my guns and everybody else's guns, and this is just one step in that direction. He's definitely on the anti-gun agenda and full balls deep in the anti-gun right. agenda. That is exactly right. That's it. How about that one? Oh, and in California, you can have an AK-47 as long as it's a pump. Oh, yeah. Norinco no made, no made a pump-action AK. But you, have, you pull back, it was a spring-loaded foring. You pulled it back and let go, and it, it chambers the rounds, but you had to pump it. And the 10-shot the, the ban in California, your AR has to be broken open and fed with a stripper clip and closed back up. Here's, a, here's another one. This, this makes no sense at all. Oh, yeah, this is a real good one here. And we deal with this a lot because of the area that we're in and the types of guns we typically sell most of. We have people that come in all the time that are in violation of this basic law right. and don't even know it because it's counterintuitive. It, most people would just think, well, that's okay, but go ahead, Barry, explain it. This is an AK pistol designed as a pistol. Now, you cannot put two grips on a pistol. If you attach this here and you slide it on and lock it down, you're in uh, violation of federal law. They can lock you up for 10 years for doing that if they wanted to. It'll slide right on there and it'll lock on. This is this is actually made for like a um, um, some kind of a light mount or whatever. But you see people all the time with these grips on their pistols. You cannot have two pistol grips on a pistol. You're violating federal law. There's only two known examples where you can actually buy a pistol with the two grips already on it. Uh, one of them is an AR that I don't remember the exact name of the company that's putting it out, but there's a company that has gotten approval mm -hmm. for the double pistol grips on the AR pistol right. and then there's that 45 uh, Thompson copy the semi-auto pistol right. that has the two grips that they approve. Auto Ordnance made a Tommy gun pistol years right. ago and it had the twin grips and the BATF made a uh, ruling on that 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 was okay. Well, Why is that okay? Why can't I put it on my gun? Now one thing we want to make clear here people is that if I do a form one on this gun and I register it as a short barrel rifle. I can put a forward grip on it, I can put a fold and wire stock, whatever I want. I can trick this thing out and then it's cool. The problem that I have with that way of thinking with the gun laws is that basically if it's too cool or too functional, right. they don't want you to have it. Right. Or they want you to convert your right into a privilege. Right. And in my opinion, if you pay the $200 tax stamp and, and you know like that, you're converting your right into a privilege. To me, that's horse crap. I mean, if you can have the pistol and mechanical, mechanically, if nothing's different, who cares if it has a grip on the front or a stock on it? It makes no difference in how the gun operates or functions right. in the slightest. The thing to think about with that $200 tax stamp is the fact that at one time, that was a lot of damn money. Oh, yeah. That was implemented back in the 30s. Right. Uh, $200 back then was an enormous amount of money. Absolutely. At one point, it was a lot of money. Nowadays, you know, that's still a pretty good little chunk for what it is. Right. But it's definitely not as much of a sting anymore as it was originally when it was implemented. Um, it's definitely a financial burden that we shouldn't have to incur. Right. Well, now, there was one case of a guy in Arizona that had a pistol with a forward pistol grip, and when he went to court, the judge threw it out. He said it didn't change the gun at all. But you can't count on that happening. That judge happened to have some common sense. Right. And when it comes to common sense in law enforcement, law making, and judgment in terms of judges and stuff, that is a in very slim supply.
right. You right. do not see a lot of common sense nowadays. It, it's just, you know, and Arizona is one of those states that they're very right wing. They, um, they're very supportive of their gun owners. They have very open and lax gun laws. And Georgia, likewise, we're a very gun friendly state. Mm -hmm. Some states uh, have stricter gun laws and they're just a tough place to live in as a gun owner. Right. Uh, we can't forget our friends overseas. You look at, here, and here's one of those gun laws, if you're watching this and you're in the UK, maybe you can clarify this for us, but I've heard that in the UK you can own a firearm, uh, let's say a shotgun or 22 high power rifle, whatever. Mm -hmm. You can't even have the damn thing in your house. Well, I think you a shotgun they it. can, but it has to be approved by the local law enforcement now. Right. In the UK, I think, that Eric, that's just handguns. Just handguns. But if you want to own a handgun in the UK and tell us if we're wrong, you have to you have to leave it at the gun range and they secure it. And you go and check it out and shoot it and they log in how many rounds you have and everything. And collect the brass. Like right. And you real can't, funny about you can't that. even you can't even have ammunition, pistol ammunition walking around with that. Yeah, see that's just crazy. I heard this one story one time, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard a story about a uh, small town in the UK, and this might have been like sometime after World War II. I don't remember exactly when, and the details are a little bit, um, you know, hazy. But I heard a story that um, that there is this rumor spreading around that they had banned bayonets, mm -hmm. and that nobody could have bayonets. Mm -hmm. So there's like this line of people wanting to turn in like every sharp object in their whole house. Right. Kitchen knives, bayonets. Right. I mean, that's just retarded. It is. Gun and registration the with it. is the first step to disarmament. And I have people coming in this store every day. Where do I go and register my gun? And we have to explain to them there is no registration. Yeah, it, it, it's a fiasco. It's an utter fiasco of misinformation and propaganda. It is. These, these, the public school system now... These kids are being brought up and brainwashed to think that guns are just this evil thing mm -hmm. and that like this registration and all this and it, it's just horseshit. Mm -hmm. The zero tolerance in the schools that we have here, if, if your child takes a picture of a gun to school, they can be expelled. Yep. So, I mean, it, it's, they're trying to disarm everybody, but they're brainwashing the youngsters into thinking that this gun is going to kill somebody. It's going to jump off the right. table and kill you. So, that and, and that's the mentality we're dealing with. That's right. But yeah. when somebody asks me where do I register my gun, it just it makes my blood boil. Because they're marching with banners flying and drums beating to socialism. That's it. Uh, you might as well just bend over and let them shoot you in the face right now. Right. That's it. I would be willing to say that 20% of the people that come in this store would probably turn their guns in tomorrow if they just announced on TV to turn your guns in. Absolutely. They would line up. Yep. Uh, and especially if they had a gun buyback program. Oh my goodness. They have those around here, and they pay $50 for any gun, no questions asked. And I've seen some of the guns that they get, Colt Commanders, guns that cost twelve or $1,300. They're stolen guns. Buying them for pennies on the dollar. Or stealing them. Just so they can take them and shred them in, in a chipper. That's yep. all they do. Shred That's them. all they do. With them. Yep. Well, hopefully America won't keep sliding down the road like it's been doing for the last 50 years. And all the gun laws now surprisingly are in our favor. We have more freedom of where we can carry our guns now. In Georgia, we can carry in a state park. We can carry on public transportation. Uh, it's getting better and better for the gun owner, but who knows what's going to happen with the next administration? Who knows? That's right. Um, and you have to remember, you know, that you represent America. If you're an American and you wake up every morning and you set out on the street, you're an American, and you have to act like an American. It, you know, gun rights are a fundamental part of our society. Mm -hmm. And if you can't accept that, then you can't call yourself an American. That That is an American value that a, we share. It's, it's, gun it's ownership. a tradition. It's a tradition, yeah. And I mean, to be American and not be a gun owner, mm -hmm. I mean, that that just to me is confounds me mm -hmm. with confusion as to how somebody can live in this country as a free citizen and not be a firearm owner. Well, it, it dumbfounds me. If you'll notice during the present uh, presidential administration, there's not much talk about gun control. If the economy was booming right now, they would be all over your guns. That's right. But they're not about, with the economy the way it is and everybody getting scared of this, that, and other, they're not about to start that yet. But uh, I think it's coming. But if the economy was good in this country, they'd be after your guns tooth and nail. Trying to get, they'd be doing the Bill Clinton thing. They sign, and they, a president can sign an executive order 
just like Bill Clinton. The crime bill was not a law, it was, a, a, it was an order that was put down for 10 years. And we had to suffer through that for 10 years. All the gun makers had to cut magazines down to 10. The, the money that that cost the gun industry was enormous. Uh, it's, a, it's an amount that nobody will ever know. Yeah, and also while we're on that subject, machine guns in general. I mean, I've always thought that that's a big crock of crap. You know, people get confused about machine guns. They're like, I've got to have a class three license on a machine gun. Well, no, that's not exactly true. But what it comes down to is, is that transferable machine guns to individuals are so inheritedly expensive right. that only people that have lots of money can afford them. Right. So in that process, you have created a class of people mm -hmm. that are haves and then have nots. Right. The, I mean, most Americans that are the age of probably 25 and under mm -hmm. will never, and, and I'm talking right now, right. today, most people 25 and under will never experience what it's like to own a machine gun because no. they will never be able to afford it. Never. never be able to. I mean, you're talking like a transferable lightning link for an AR is $5,000 for a little link. piece of scrap metal with a serial number scratching in it. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, even the cheapest machine gun that's transferable to individuals is four grand, yeah. minimal, About with a $200 four, tax. $200 tax. And see, that needs to stop too because that, that is a a form of gun ownership in America that a, a generation of Americans has gotten left out on. Mm -hmm. Those that grew up in the old school, they remember when you could buy a Mac 11 <clears throat> for, you know, nothing. Right. They were cheap at one time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, now you, we got this class of Americans that, in my opinion, we've been disenfranchised from mm -hmm. that, that joy of ownership. I mean, you know, it's just something that really burns me every time I think about it. Thirty years ago, I worked for a company in Atlanta. We could convert ARs to M16 configuration. In those days, you could buy an AR for $500, do your tax, and we put the M16 parts in it for another hundred and something. Under $1,000, you had a fully automatic weapon. Right. Was it 86 or 88 when they stopped the, the... I believe 86. I believe in 1986, you can no longer, uh, you can no longer create new guns for civilians. So. The reason they're so expensive, you have to find a receiver or a gun that was registered before then and it's transferable. That's correct. For instance, if, if this was a registered receiver before 86, you, with this serial number, you can keep rebuilding this with new part. This is the only part that's registered is the receiver. That's what the ATF considers the gun. This, this is, is the receiver. gun right here. So you can buy this receiver and build your own gun, but what I'm saying, if this was a registered lower, for an M16, but prior to 86, you could just keep rebuilding. It. Everything else is Legos. You tack on anything you right. want to that thing. But the problem is, like uh, Eric is saying, the new generation they can't afford this. They can't afford a receiver that was registered. No, they can't do it. And it's it's really to me just fundamentally flawed. I mean, there's nothing illegal about owning a machine gun, no. but yet. Some people can have them, some people can't. It's just because people have all the money can have them. That's right. To me, it's it, it's really almost a version of class struggle. It's almost like these people with all the money, they don't want to legalize it because they've spent all this money on these expensive sure. machine guns. Sure. If they if they legalize machine guns overnight and make it where you can manufacture them again, uh -huh. then that fifty thousand dollar Thompson you just bought right. overnight is worth a grand. And see, I think that there's a class of Americans that's keeping it from happening behind the scenes. Uh -huh. They don't want to admit it. But I don't want to go too far out on a limb, but I just really feel like, you know, well, the NRA it, could be doing more to try to get our rights back for machine guns. You right. know? They, they don't Let's protect the easier. right of machine gun owners. Well, Only For instance, uh, Eric and I, we had a little machine gun shoot back in April of last year. One guy, he probably had a half a million dollars worth of machine guns in the trunk of his car. Right. He paid 40000 for a Thompson. He had a Sturm Gewehr 44. I don't know what he paid for that. It had to be way fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Uh, M16 with suppressor. I mean, this guy had a half a million dollars worth of guns riding around in his car with him. Now, that's what you have to do. Well, like Eric said, it's the higher-up people who have the money now that's got, that have the fun toys. That's right. We'll never, we'll there, never. There's no reason why that stuff should not be legal for everybody. Right, right. But or readily accessible, I should say. Readily it's legal, accessible. it's just not readily right. accessible. Right. You know, the funny thing about it, and I'll leave it at this, because I know this video is getting long, and like I told you, this is going to be an important gun gripe, and it is. The funny thing is, is that there is no law that says 
you cannot build a machine gun no, there from isn't. scratch, but they will not accept your $200 tax stamp. Right. So, so it's not that it's illegal for me to send in the tax and register, let's say, an AR lower mm -hmm. as an M16 and then build an M16. Right. right. There's no law that says I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But when I send the $200 tax stamp in, they'll kick it back. They'll, they'll refuse it. Mm -hmm. So, so that in my mind, I'm being I'm being denied my right to own a machine gun in that. Right. But nobody holds the ATF accountable for that. Here's another tragedy. Let's say you're digging around in Granddaddy's barn and you find a Thompson submachine gun buried out there somewhere. Right. That's worth about a hundred thousand dollars. Too bad. You got to turn it in. There's no way you can register it. There's no amnesty anymore. They did do an amnesty years ago. If you had one, you could bring it forward and, and register it. But if you find something like that now, it's going to wind up on the scrap heap. Yep. They're going to take a piece of history that's worth $100,000, $150,000, and they're going to they're going to crush it. That's that's the administration we deal with. That's it. You know, it, it's just these people that just have this loathing hatred of gun owners. For guns and gun owners. Guns and gun owners. And they hate you because you want a gun. They hate you because you want to be free and you want to keep right. protect your freedoms. Because as long as you've got that gun in your hand, they have to reason with you. They can't force you. That's correct. They can't change your mind by force as long as you got a gun in your hand. That's so they correct. want to take that away. Yeah, they want us to slip down a toilet bowl of socialism. That's it. And it's going to start with them trying to take your guns.